No one looks at someone else's insecurities and go, yeah, that's a turn on. Mm. Like, that's attractive. Never. Welcome to another episode of Relationship Theory. I'm your co-host, Tom Bilyeu, and I'm here with none other than my beautiful wife, Lisa Bilyeu. What is up, homegirl? Let's get started. Mm. All right. So we'll go to Facebook. This question is from Adam Willoughby. How do you deal with being jealous of past partners? Love your work, Tom and Lisa. Thank you. Um, well, when we first met, um, I remember, like, I don't know, we'd been dating maybe for two or three weeks and your ex-girlfriend had a birthday. Oh, that's right. And I remember wow, you, totally and so that. I'm Greek. His she ex-girlfriend was Turkish. Turkish. Like, and he takes odds? me to a Turkish restaurant. <laughs> that is weird. I have a thing for, like, the Mediterranean but you do. look, apparently. Um, and so, anyway, so first, like, three weeks in, you yeah. take me to your ex-girlfriend's birthday. She's beautiful, so, of course, like, you know, every insecurity in me just jumps out. Um, and you were so sweet and attentive to me. Like, I think actions matter, right? Words matter. And so you took me there, you held my hand. We never really even spoke about being boyfriend and girlfriend. You walked at, like, you weren't bashful about saying hi to her, wishing her happy birthday, giving her a birthday hug. Like, you were just you. And I don't know if you even thought about it, but it was those things like you didn't seem hesitant to hug her, which actually made me feel better. Because it was like you weren't trying to hide anything. You weren't like, oh, hey, happy birthday. And right. like you were just like, hey, happy birthday. Yeah, meet my girlfriend, Lisa. Lisa, this is, I don't remember her name. But um, you were just 100% genuinely yourself. And you made me feel very welcomed. You made me feel like the most special person in that restaurant. Um, and so that made a massive difference to how I felt about her. Um, and then you, um, I remember, so we used to do photography a lot in our spare time. We would go out and just do photography. And when I met you, you actually had the dark room. And for all those right. people out there that have no idea what a dark room yeah, is, digital, it's you basically yeah. yeah process your own film. And you were an artist and you had incredible photography, but you had incredible photography of ex-girlfriends. Um, but again, like you never made me feel like it was a comparison and you never tried to hide how you felt about them when you were talking about them. Um, it wasn't like, oh, yeah, 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 she meant nothing. And no, she's not attractive. Like there's, there's such a falseness going back to being honest with each mm. other where you were like, yeah, look at this photo. Like I, what I love about this photo is the composition and the way her face is and the way she's looking and like the light, the way it's hitting her. And in that honesty, like, I was just, like, relieved. I didn't feel like you were hiding anything. So I didn't have any kind of jealousy towards them. And I think that... You so to bring it back to the question, yeah. so part of it is the partner needs to be very thoughtful. Yes. Um, and so to give you my perspective on that birthday party, I thought very much about it. And uh, this comes to why I think movies, TV shows, comic books are so important. Like, watch a couple romantic comedies to see how to do everything wrong. And then do it exactly the opposite. So in a romantic comedy, of course, they would go to the party and the person wouldn't hold their hand and would be a little bit weird about it. And like, there would be like all these excuses and reasons. And so it's like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm not with that person anymore. I'm not with that person for a reason. I'm with this new person who I'm in completely intoxicated by so i want this person to know and know in certain terms like and you want to talk about another thing that i'm not into the whole like being with somebody that you don't want other people to know about like they did a whole thing in sex in the city if i remember right yeah. about that and it's the like the restaurant that no one goes yeah, to exactly like nobody wants to be that person like that's so hurtful right. to find out that you're that person like that's super damaging so making sure that i made you feel good that you knew that I wanted to be with you like that's all critical mm -hmm. so let's just answer the hard question that's always more fun so let's assume that the other person has done that for this person that asked the question yeah because as she says how do you deal with being jealous yeah so imagine you're already jealous of your right. past a you're jealous b you're insecure which they did mention right yeah because it's really jealousy yes. is born of insecurity they're not as good as them yeah so um at the end of the day being insecure is a human trait you need to deal with that insecurity. You need to talk about it. You need to be honest, like vocalizing in a non-obsessive way, 
vocalizing in a non-obsessive way what your insecurity is to the other person so that they can be aware of it, that they can be sensitive to it, that they can help you with that. But you have to do the work of not letting it become obsessive. And this is where people trip up is they become obsessed with their insecurities and they like want to feed into it. And like there's because the insecurity gives them this really heightened emotion, like the intoxic emotions are intoxicating. And this is this is where you get drama queens. Emotions are intoxicating. So merely feeling a strong emotion is kind of fucking cool. And so people like want that like really heightened emotion of like, I'm gonna test this person and I'm gonna, like I've told them my insecurity and now like you're in this really dark place but you feel alive and it, hmm. so it's like, dude, you can't let yourself do that because it's just, it's a waste of fucking energy. So understanding that yes, you're gonna have a temptation to like go into that dark insecure place just because it's heightened and you feel alive and it's dramatic and even like crying hysterically and like all of that makes you feel alive. So people need to be very cognizant of the way the human mind works. They need to talk themselves off a ledge. They need to understand that there's a negative voice that's found this thing to obsess about to you know, just play over and over and they have to say, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna obsess about it, it is what it is, and I'm gonna do either things to make that insecurity better if they don't feel that they're educated enough, go read. Um, if you don't feel that your body is the way that you want it in a non-obsessive way, eat healthier, start working out, like there are always things that you can do. And then men are judged for their wealth and height, okay? can do all kinds of things about wealth, can't do jack shit about your height. So let's focus on that one. So because you know that there's nothing you can do about your height, to become obsessive about it does not make sense. Mm -hmm. You have to literally say, hey, this is as tall as I am. I'm never gonna be any taller. I'm not gonna waste time thinking about that. I wanna be with somebody who legitimately doesn't care about that. They need to make me feel that they don't care about that. But I also need to shut off the part of my brain that cares about it. like literally deaden it. Stop thinking about it. Don't be obsessive. It is what it is. Let it go. You just have to like do the mental gyrations to not make that a part of what you value yourself for. Right. So you got to do the work is the end of the day. Like insecurities aren't going to go away by themselves. You have to do the work to stop thinking about it, to address what you can address and then to let go of the things that you can't. And there's a great quote, ah, I forget who said it, but basically there are two things you should never worry about. Things you can change because go change them and things you can't change right. because you can't change them. <laughs> so stop worrying about it. So, and through like doing the mental work, you can get to that point. So I think that in a relationship, 90% of the work of an insecurity is on the person who's insecure. They've got to do that, let it go, get past it, address it, whatever. And then 10% is the other person. You need to make them feel good about it. You need to recognize what an insecurity is and that if you ever use it against them, like that is a cardinal sin in my opinion. That's a very hateful thing to do. Um, I don't think, I think everyone for their own reasons should say, I will never use somebody's insecurity against them. Like no matter what they're doing to me, I'm never going to lash back out and throw their insecurity mm -hmm. back at them. So that just feels good. Now, if somebody were being abusive to me with my own insecurities, I'm not gonna lash back out of them, but I am going to pretty rapidly get them out of my life. Um, and that would be my suggestion. Also, the truth is no one looks at someone else's insecurities and go, yeah, that's a turn on. Mm. Like that's attractive, never. So Meaning the fact that they are insecure right. about it. Right. So for instance, if I was really jealous about God, and I am not, but let's just say I was jealous about a, you know, um, a woman who was coming onto you because, right. um, because of Quest and everything, you get a lot of young women trying to chat you up. And um, so imagine I'm jealous about it or insecure about it. Well, I've got two choices. One, go up to you and be like, why were you talking to her? Um, I can't believe it, blah, blah, blah. And so now do you think that I'm more attractive to you or less, right? You're gonna be less attracted to me versus I come with confidence. I come with, um, yeah, just confidence. And just, you know, like I've said to you in the past, like, babe, you still got it. Like women are still trying to chat you up. Like, that's right, that's my man. And so I feel proud and about it. And because I feel proud and because even if I do get a twinge of like, oh, she's got a better physique than me, oh, she's prettier than me, whatever, because of course I'm human and I'm a female, those thoughts do pop into my mind. I immediately eradicate it by saying, yes, but he's with you. And so I'm confident. And I really do just tell myself that like, com 
um, insecurities are not attractive. And so if my whole um, goal is to make you yearn for me, is to make you um, attracted to me and feel proud that I'm with you, then I also need to reciprocate knowing what you're looking for. And so, yeah, like I kind of squash that insecurity immediately because it's like, look, if you want to be with somebody who's more attractive or you want to be with somebody younger, or you want to be with somebody with a better body, you're going to be right. Like there's no amount of stalking, checking your phone, um, badgering you, arguing with you that's going to stop you if you really want to. So now I just need to know I'm responsible for my own actions. I can't, you know, be responsible for your actions, but I know what I would look for. And if you kept coming to me where you were insecure about guys who had bigger arms or whatever, like eventually I'd be like, oh my God, enough. Like then go work out, go get bigger arms. Like if that's what your thing is, then go do it. But you just badgering me saying like, why are you looking at his arms? Like now it's just draining on me. And I don't look at you with admiration. I look at you going, oh God, here we go again. And so because, yeah. And so that's what I would Every time I felt insecure about something, I would just snap myself back into, like, no one finds this attractive. No one. That's mean, but wonderfully true. It's <laughs> so true. What does so that true. mean? It, you want the other person to just mollycoddle you forever. And right? look, I wouldn't be cruel no, about no, no. it. And you're I would not say, baby, you want bigger it, arms? Baby, it's a hard truth. You? Don't don't back off now. Because no, that I'm is not. so important for people to hear. <laughs> not only is it not attractive, it's hopelessly unattractive yeah. and yeah it, it, that is so 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 important for people to hear and i just mean i wouldn't be cool about it i'd be like you're help, trust me but... you're amazing and have always been incredibly <laughs> incredibly supportive of my insecurities but you've also you made be. that very clear yes. like you got to do some work yes uh it's not sexy for you to wallow in being insecure about mm -hmm. something um, and yeah, you got to do it. And guys, when it comes to, and I, I mean people, when it comes to an insecurity, think about the, the thing that like you can't do anything about. Even that, you've got to let it go. Like you just have to. Because as she pointed out, it's not sexy. It does not like make the other person feel good to be around somebody who's letting their own sense of worth be diminished by something that can't be changed. Right. So yeah.